Greetings out there in the interwebs. You think Ryan Frost is infamous? Well, I am so much more infamous, sir, than he is. This is Scotty Anarchy from Battlefront Pro Extreme Wrestling and the heavy metal band Crossing Rubicon. Now, time to get yourself a little bit of the bubbly, because you are watching Stirring the Pot with the greatest of them all, Mr. Don Kincaid, baby. This is Stirring the Pot with Don Kincaid, and look who I got, babies. This is one Justin F. Incredible and one Scott F. And Anarchy together in the same interview on the same night. We are in a, it's not that really warm out here, but it's still a beautiful setting. We are at Veterans Memorial Park in Watertown, CT, and uh, I don't know where this is going to start. I don't know where this is going to go. This could run one hour. This could run 10 minutes. This could run an hour and a half. It could run three hours. Who the F knows? That's what the best thing about this is. Um, I've got you both here. So there's like a thousand questions that are running through my head. I only have one brain cell. So if I do a lot of jumping and maybe interrupting, don't hold it against me. Don't kick my ass. Don't hit me with a stick. Uh, stuff like that, if you if you will. Um, that just cuts our whole interview short, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, man, I can't believe I have both of you in the same setting. This is amazing. I mean, I mean, this is a really uh, an honor. Please, thank you for your time. I mean, this My is pleasure. this is fantastic, yeah, really. My pleasure. Um, I think they brought me here to a uh, neutral locale. I don't think they want me to know where they live and stuff. So I, I, I don't blame them. Hey, I don't blame them. That's cool. That's cool. Uh, yeah. Fine China. I, yeah, yeah, stuff like that. Hey, but I'm not a book. <laughs> look at the look at the threads. I'm really, the Ryan, dude. This is such an amazing shirt. This has been gifted to me by one Scotty Anarchy. This is a custom shirt. Frost That's is custom. stupid. Yeah, this is a custom-made anarchy shirt right here, and I was gifted to, and I wear it with pride, my friend. It should. I love this shirt. That's the hell of a shirt. Right he's not just famous, he's infamous. Yeah, he is infamous. In many ways. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we will definitely be talking about Mr. Frost because there is a relationship that I've talked to Mr. Frost that involves both of you, if not oh, more. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I'm going to start right off with, obviously, you've been to the WWF at the time. Into the WWE transition. Mm -hmm. uh, you've done the ECW, mm -hmm. uh, the indie scene galore. Ring of Honor, All Japan, New Japan, Impact, TNA, the whole thing. Man. A lot of stuff going on in Mr. Credible's life. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and if I, I, I mean, I don't like to bring up age because I got this this vacant lot going on up I, here and stuff. Um, but it's all good. Mid 40s or so? 45 years old. 45. And 45 done, years young. Brother. You've done a lot yes, in, in, yes, in, in your career. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. Mr. Scott Anarchy, now, um, I'm going to start with a question with you because. I know this, for me and you, uh, wrestling is very new, okay, and, and, and we've only had a relationship for a little bit of time, uh, and, and first off, he's the singer of Cross Rubicon, which fucking badass, rules, badass, 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 badass I love the new album, go on. I, I, awesome. yeah, I will go on, um, <laughs> I was gifted, again, I was gifted, Mr. Anarchy So Loving, I was gifted the entire album by Dropbox, so I could intervene, uh, uh, inter, um, interact, in, 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 inject, Ah, into my highlight better, videos for wrestling when I make highlight videos and they've been working really cool I don't play the whole tracks I kind of start from the solo out or you know I kind of do in little pieces because if you're not going to have your material out there I don't want to be the guy just you know throwing your 
throwing all of that beautiful music and, and it's great man some Thank great you. tracks the new up. single is badass it's, it's amazing seeing red is awesome and no the, the other one wings on yeah. wax on yeah, wings wax on, yeah. wax, wax on wings wax on wax off I've, Wait, been, right? I've been putting the kid over on <laughs> yeah. the on, on the uh, twitter machine there yeah the old twitter everybody's got twitter the I mean I have machine. it but I don't really use it I, I use but, Facebook uh, yeah no it's, it's a phenomenal video phenomenal song and I had so much to talk to you about and we haven't got, we, I saw him this morning we didn't get to discuss this very much Queensryche. Am I wrong in the vibe of the, the little bit of the, in, you know? No, there's nothing. Yeah, there's. I. It's one so of my beautiful. Bands. It's so beautiful. The, the song is so beautifully. I mean, I, it's really. I, Put together. No, it's such a beautiful song. Yeah. And and again, I'm saying this with nothing but respect. Such a well written song. Mm. Such a beautifully. I just. I was. Um, I. I didn't know because I. I don't put him over. Him. <laughs> Sometimes it's like I. I you know, I saw him this morning. We're like, all right, you know, Scotty and I talked. He helped me out this morning. And then I'm like, all right. And then I start looking over Scotty's stuff, and I'm like, oh, here's his new video. And Which like, came out fantastic. And it looked beautiful. The, the scenery was yeah, beautiful. Yeah, everything So I'm, came I'm out like great. looking at it, and I'm like, and then the song just kind of pierced through your skin, and like you get goosebumps. Mm. And I'm like, that's that's my Scotty. <laughs> <laughs> like, the rock star guy, that's my buddy. Yeah. So, see, see this love? We're know. definitely going to no, be it's touching real, upon but it's it. Yeah. Real shit. Yeah. It's it, real, it's shit. I, he doesn't even, I don't tell him this because I don't want to give him you know, a big head or anything. But, <laughs> but uh, no, it's it's amazing. I, the, the music these guys put out, and Jeannie is why. I mean, they're amazing, amazing artists. They're I've like, seen they're, them they're live. Blessed, I, blessed. I've seen them live at Test of Strength mm -hmm. that time. Uh, right. I meant to hit them at Bleachers on a CD release. I did not make that. But then I got the pleasure to see you guys at the, the Metal Fest for Eyes of yeah, the Dead, yeah, if I'm not mistaken. Fun. And you did your new album in its entirety. Almost, pretty much, almost. pretty much. There was, there was five or six tracks, right, that you played that yeah. that, that night? Yeah, I think we had like 30 minutes to play. And man, what a, I got to record every single song. Awesome. I got them in their entirety, so cool. and then I caught it up, and then I threw it out That's there so for cool, them guys dude. to check it out and Absolutely. stuff. Dude, Jeannie, when he mentioned Jeannie, your wife, Jeannie on the microphone is an animal. <laughs> they're, 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 they have this synergy, and I, and I love it because I've known him for decades he's such a great dude and i don't know her very well but like their love and their passion mm. come together and it's so beautiful when they share that moment and when she sings or when he sings she say it just it's pretty it's it's a, pretty badass it, it, when, it you, is. when you see it removed from yourself pretty it's pretty <laughs> fucking special dude when you look back at your Sorry. videos and yeah, stuff yeah, yeah. do you kind of critique yourself or like you're looking at the final product before you release it you obviously have to watch it um are you critiquing yourself or are you just taking it in and saying yeah man this is this is some cool shit i um i i grew up in the mtv generation and even though like videos aren't like the in thing anymore it's still kind of like it's definitely an avenue that i like to go with so i'm really strict and very well, you guys were all there for the scene red video. I'm kind of a control freak when it comes to doing it. So by the time the video goes from, you know, writing the treatment to the final product, I'm kind of there every step of the way. So by the time it comes out, I'm like, although I will say seeing red was a little different because Kevin just kind of, Kevin added so much to that video that I didn't even see mm -hmm. that I was just like, holy shit. Uh, but for the most part, I kind of, when it comes out, I'm always like more of a side of relief. Right. It's like, does the final product match the vision that I had in the beginning? Mm -hmm. And most of the time, I oh, and I, I've been blessed to work with really great directors that kind of see that and they kind of, you know, follow through with it and they're with me every step of the way. And mm -hmm. I'll be like, hey, that's a good idea or that shit, you know, whatever. Um, but um, I kind of given them a little bit of leeway too. But by the time the final product comes out, it's kind of either what I wanted in the beginning or it's better than what I wanted mm -hmm. in the beginning. Do you, as a, it's a five piece. Do you, as a five piece, do you look at it collectively, the idea, and bring it to fruition, or is it basically you kind of taking the reins and running with it? How, how does that that creativity work for Crossing Rubicon in the video specifically? Well, before I go any further, I'm gonna say songwriting wise, we all write together. Okay. For the videos, I pretty much, from beginning to end, concept is all pretty much me and my director. Okay. Um, usually, it's my concept. The director tweaks it, then I fight with the director for about. <laughs> for a long time <laughs> and then we kind of come to a conclusion of what works out best and a lot of it's give and take but that's the videos has always been me and the, the songwriting is a collaboration of yes. everybody which is vital when it comes to the music scene yeah um because everybody wants to feel part of that project you know you want to feel part of that that, mm -hmm. that that pride and the effort and everything that it took to make that album you know 
Um, so that's really cool. I, I dig that aspect that it's not just one or two people that are writing it. And, yeah. you know, so that's cool. Um, I, I would like to speak about your drummer because your drummer is most recent member, if I'm not mistaken, Mike Clemente. Yes. Am I saying that correctly? Yes. Uh, me and Mike have talked uh, at the Metal Fest specifically waiting for a burger. The burger was fantastic, but it took like an hour and a half to <laughs> fucking get one. <laughs> it, 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 it took forever. Um, but me and Mike, we spoke for about 20 minutes and it was very cool. Um, and I started the conversation off because he mentioned Queensryche. I played the track, I Will Remain, which for me, oh. I don't know why it is or what it is about that track. That's my, my favorite track of the entire album. And I came into work one day. I work with Jim, my old drummer from High Octane. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you're familiar yep. with him. I took my phone. I pushed play on I Will Remain. I left it on the table where he was, and I walked away, and I did my, my thing in the back. It got past your scream at the beginning. He looks back at me and goes, is this new priest? Hey, oh, shit. That's, right. That's, right? I'll take that. I'll take and, that, too. And, I like Jim. Okay, and my insides went, holy F, he just said, is this priest? So that's, that's saying a lot because Jim's a, a great musician, you know? Yeah. Um, and then I go, no, 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 just listen. And then, the, you know, the, the intro finally uh, kicked in, and then the verse started doing it, and then I got to the chorus. And that's when you can kind of tell. Because, I'm not, you know, after... Through the rest of the song, it's almost not carbon copy, but you can kind of dig from the, the intro verse chorus. And sure. I took it away sure, and I sure. stopped it. I go, that's your boy, Scotty Anarchy and Crossing Rubicon. So cool. He was floored, you know, and, that's awesome. and that's what I'm that's trying so to cool. trying that's to express so cool. is it's a lot of um, effort and love and uh, when it comes to the music. And I think it's really showing at this point. Um, I don't know Cross and Rubicon for a long time in their history, but at this point, I think you guys are doing pretty good. How are you feeling right now and uh, where Cross and Rubicon is sitting? Uh, feeling pretty good now. I mean, right now, my, my big effort has been trying to get us on the road, uh, get us back on tour again. I mean, last record we toured, we toured most of the country. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's a lot of places like North Carolina, Florida, Chicago, Detroit that want us back there, mm -hmm. uh, St. Louis. Um, and I'm just like trying to get us back there right now. That's my, my, my goal right now. Are you um, the the Booker guy? Uh, you were currently yes. Um, we had a uh, we did have a manager and a booking agent. I might actually be bringing them back on board. Okay. Now that we, you know, there's really no point of paying a booking agent while you're writing and recording yeah, a record. Right, for right. Two years. Yeah. You know, but now that we're you know we have to go back out there and do it again. I think it's time to take it back to that that place again. So how many dates would you be looking at if you were to maybe set up a tour? I'm gonna do uh, my goal uh, for the next you know like probably like for the next throughout winter into spring would be to do like three to four day runs on the weekends in the beginning because when we go on tour you know we'll play for 30 40 50 200 people on thursday friday saturday and maybe sunday night but then monday and tuesday and wednesday you're playing to right. five people yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah. so right now to kind of go within a 600 mile radius of the state and kind mm, yeah. of hit the yeah. strong points and yeah. then once you know we once we do do a, you know, hook up with the right, you know, with the right uh, touring outfit and stuff like that to go back out for a good two, three months, uh, two, three weeks at a time to do maybe about a month and a half, two months of touring. Absolutely. Would it be more of a, like a Webster scenario type venues across the country or is that how, where do you guys played, find yourself in? Everything, we man. played everything. Everything. We, we played, uh, we played, uh, usually like, usually like booking, like starting off with like a, like a festival gig mm -hmm. and you line up a couple festivals and you work out a band that's on the same festivals. And you go out with them, but um, and then you pretty much play everything from dive bars to rock clubs to, you know, wherever you know, wherever they're willing to, to to pay the guarantee and you know do the whole catering deal and you can work it out. So you look for the flat rate. That's kind of yeah. what you, you do nowadays because I mean, who the hell knows what music is so crazy nowadays? Crazy. It's it's so crazy. So you when you uh, reach out or or, or agents or companies or ven uh, venues kind of reach out to you. Um, it's a flat rate kind of thing is what you're looking for. Touring, yes. Uh, Connecticut is a different story because Oof, it's, used, a, it's a roller coaster. I used to do a flat rate in Connecticut, and I had I had a club owner one time. It was like came up to me and was like, "Here's the money I owe you, and you guys did twelve hundred dollars more at the door than what you were supposed to. So here's the rest of it." And I was like, "Why the hell am I doing this?" Mm. So I started doing like a I like a like a door price for Connecticut. Okay. Because yeah. I can't judge, you know. Yeah. I don't want the club owners to get screwed over if it's a bad night. Right, and if it's an amazing night, I don't want so. 
and it's such a uh, a crapshoot because you never know who's coming out on Friday or Saturday yeah. or Thursday or whatever night you're jamming. I've been there, you know. I was doing the '80s thing for a while, just the covers and stuff. Um, but it's always a crapshoot, man. And you mm. you kind of have to fight the owners with not playing the the cash re- the magic cash register song all night. You know what I'm saying? I'd rather so, not fight. The only time I will fight for it is if it's on the road because it's like you're, you have. Five people in a van. When you're on the road, yeah. Mm. The, you I don't to, know anything about the music business. It's like the you same guys thing as wrestling. Fight. It's yeah, yeah, yeah it's very know, similar. Just from my experience, yeah. yeah. No, no nothing on the road. Than, yeah, nothing. It sucks more than getting screwed over by a promoter when you're oh, 200 is, yeah. miles away from the next gig mm-hmm. or more, like or more, know, yeah. yeah, or more. Yeah, we had, we had one show. We had a 14 and a half hour drive to the next show. I know. It was like, <laughs> and both of you in the wrestling world and the music world have both uh, run into that situation. Oh. Being very far away from home, X, X show is coming, you're guaranteed X money, and X money doesn't come. You're like, money never son comes. of a bitch. Yeah, it yeah. happens. It happens all the time. See, that's what I'm saying. Music, I've always said this in all my interviews, music and wrestling are so intertwined. Well, I mean, yeah. and, again, this is, this is more of Scotty's uh, territory with the music, um, but... It, Anything that's a touring thing, professional wrestling, we we make we make our money on touring, on you know on live events mm-hmm. uh, all over the world, all over the you know the country, the world, and there's been so many times where I mean I've literally and in in this year, this year of 2019, I have literally gone out to uh, Indianapolis, uh, did a show, the show bombed, didn't get paid for said show. Ooh. And then uh, supposed to go home and didn't have a return flight because I, I flew, they, they flew me there, didn't fly me back. So I was stuck in Indianapolis and I had to call friends and, you know, I didn't call you. But I can't drive out to Indianapolis on a flight. <laughs> but no, but seriously, I had to call friends to help me get home. Yeah. You know, and that's a hell of a, I mean, I'm a Connecticut boy, so, but seriously, you get put in situations wow. sometimes that are uh, irreprehensible, irreprehensible, dude. It's, it's ridiculous. And it's very scary when you're out there. Yeah, when no kidding. When you're out there, it's, it's you against the machine. It's right. you against the world. Uh, and I, I can only imagine how cool that is for a band like crossing Rubicon to, to go out there and tour because it is, uh, that's one thing that, uh, my uh, only thing I could say is when ECW was a big thing in the nine, uh, late 90s, and I know I'm dating myself, but uh, that's my claim to fame, but uh, we were a band of brothers. We, we, we hit the road all over the world, mm-hmm. and we fought for each other. We were with each other. We protected each other on the road, off the road, product, no product, on screen, off the screen. And it's it's similar to you know what I mean. It, it kind yeah. of it all resonates, and, and that yeah. kind of the passion for what you do is you know it kind of goes. You see it through the work that we do, right? Absolutely. And, and, I, and I'm sure that's that's there in the music as well. You it, know, and I'm sure it's relevant. As soon know? as soon as you see him on stage, along oh, with the rest of the he has a presence he's about a him. Beast. And that's this what guy's I'm saying. A fucking animal, dude. He's awesome. What they he's say is, awesome. you know, they the saying is master your craft, and I, yeah. I think you guys both in your industries do very very well. Um, now you were talking about you know the brotherhood and stuff like that, and on the road. Now it was it was a little different because. You're going out on the road with a bunch of guys and girls that are behind the scenes in the locker room, and now you're hitting the road. When you're in the bars and stuff, I, I have to ask, like, is there, like, real legit fights and you got to watch each other's back in the bars and all well, of that bullshit? Or is it more like well, fanfare kind of, hey, it's just incredible, it's Sandman and all of that cool okay, stuff? Um, yes and no. I, I'll make it real simple. I won't, like, dilly-dally. Um, in the in the early '90s, yeah, it was a little bit of that because there was still uh, what we call kayfabe, mm-hmm. which is we're protecting the business uh, as far as is it real, is it not real. Uh, so back then, it was a little bit more we protected it, kind of, but uh, but more more or less in how it is now and how it was then. Uh, what I'm speaking about is we just wanted to protect one another as brothers and sisters mm. on the road. Like, you know, we're, we, you know, even if we don't know each other, you, all of us, we're out in a bar. We might not even be friends necessarily, but we're acquaintances, but we're all on the road together. Uh, if God forbid something bad happened or, you know, people start getting crazy or silly, you know, we always protect our own. Mm-hmm. So that was always the thing. We always protect your own out, out on the road. And, and that was something that, you know, I've been all over the world, brother, mm-hmm. and I never felt alone, ever. 
That's awesome. I mean, I've been everywhere, man. Yeah. I, there's not one place. I, I've, I've been all the continents, mm -hmm. you know, all over, everywhere. Nice. And uh, I can't say that I ever felt alone because, you know, somebody had your back. Yeah. And, and, and again, not in, a, not in a crazy way or a right. macho way, but just like, you know, your brothers are going to pick you up and help you out and make sure you're okay. And that was, and I've done that for others as well. And, you know, so it, it's always a cool thing. Yeah, know? that's awesome. Yeah, very cool thing. When you're on the road with the band, do you find yourselves in this kind of um, same question? Do you find yourselves in these weird situations where it's like, hey, uh, buddy, back off? Uh, honestly, I'll say like most of the time we've been on, on the road, it's always been, I mean, other bands that we've played with as well, including ourselves, we always kind of like look out for each other. Um, you do start to notice your quirks of your band members that make you want to kill them sometimes. <laughs> um, you know, it's usually like a t like you when that guy that doesn't help carry gear once in a while in local shows when you're playing six nights in a week and they're not ever like mm. everyone's like we're gonna kill him tonight. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, he's we're slowly slitting his throat to sleep. Yeah. You know, but so like that kind of stuff. Um, I have very seldomly gotten shit on by anybody. Mm -hmm. You know, like it usually it's usually kind of you know people that are going out to especially you're going out to see like bands that are kind of you know, like mid tier bands where you're not like rock stars. You know, it's like usually people are pretty. If you're coming out to see original music for the first time, usually you're pretty cool. It's pretty yeah. chill, yeah. chill yeah, vibe and absolutely. stuff. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So I see you're wearing Cross and Rubicon, and absolutely. you have this Crossing Rubicon just incredible. Just Incredibles Rockin' F and Wrestling. Yes. Oh, that's the music video right there. That was the music video shoe shirt. That is pretty sweet, man. Are those kind of maybe for sale or? or this or one is for sale, and I'm doing a production run of these myself. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I like both, and yeah. your baseball style is pretty this cool. Is, this, yeah, this is all Crossing Rubicon. So this I see you're wearing Rubicon. each other's shirt, and this was. <laughs> and, and, and you know what? The not funny planned. thing is. I'm not allowed to wear that shirt. Uh, no. As a musician, you're not allowed to wear your own band. That's shirt. what they say. Well, I, I wear my. As a wrestler, you can. As a wrestler, you can wear. You your can. Own that's what they say. So I'm rocking this shirt because it's technically my wrestling shirt. That's uh, one thing that <laughs> different. That's I very swear different. Christ, we did not. <laughs> this design. Well, both of these were both done by the guy that directed the, yeah. the Scene Red video. Oh, yeah. cool. Yeah. Kevin James Freer. Awesome, um, dude. The yeah. video's dope as hell. This yeah, it is. Awesome. It's pretty cool. I wanted to do Hulk Hogan's Rock and Wrestling anime cartoon show from the '80s, mm -hmm. but like with a modern twist on it and ECW lettering. Yeah, that's, all good. that's pretty neat. That was, man. that was dope. Yeah. Uh, so that brings me to my next question. This is going to be interesting. You guys have shown so much love from like second one when we. I, I'm going to ask you talk, and I have to check my stuff because again, I'm a one man show. So if if this is all for nothing, that would really suck. <laughs> Yeah, you, you know? want to make sure the condom didn't break. Yeah, so, well, uh, <laughs> oh, look, and it's starting to rain. I am so glad we moved it to oh, the gazebo. Wow. Yeah. Pretty cool. um, so my question is, the, the love and the friendship that you guys have shown right from second one, man, um, could you tell us and bring us, because we don't know the relationship between uh, Just Incredible and Scott Anarchy, um, could you kind of describe where this relationship, how it became, and how, how long have you known each other and all of that good stuff? And I'll be right back. All right. Are we going uh, to talk while you're checking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please go ahead. <laughs> well, in high school, we were both known as the Zach Morris and A.C. Slater of Waterbury. Pretty much. <laughs> no, you are not. No, we went, no, but what he, said, what he means by this is uh, he went to Sacred Heart High School. I went to Holy Cross, uh, which are two, uh, you know, two totally different uh, Catholic schools that are but very much rivals. But no, uh, I, man, I ran in, uh, God's honest truth. No, God's honest truth. Um, I, I fell on some hard times, not hard times, just a, a different change of life. Mm -hmm. And I went to a restaurant to try to get a job as a, as a cook or as anything, quite frankly, with dishwasher, whatever. And I went to a place called Maggie McFly's and uh, I just, you know, wanted an application. And, and Scotty was there, he was managing at the time. And, um, you know, and that's how it kind of happened. Uh, I got hired and, you know, we, I don't even remember everything but we, we just, met prior to that did we because of jason i met is you that jason. how that went yes jason oh knight are we speaking of jason yeah, jason, yeah. Knight. jason knight. i don't even remember jason knight was jason my night piece yeah jason knight was my wrestling trainer years ago mm -hmm. which and, which is again my manager in ecw mm -hmm, you know which again i didn't manage work man you know so was, was that you know, when he I, was running acw out of waterbury oh wow yeah that's the pro wrestling and was there a uh, assault, wrestling? assault championship was wrestling, assault, assault championship, championship wrestling. Yes. And Holy then um, I met I met him through there, and then 
couple of years later, we bumped into each other. I just felt like I always knew him. <laughs> kind of did. I, I always, no, sir, no, no, no yeah. bullshit. No, it's all kidding aside. No bullshit. I always feel like we have a kindred. There's something there. Like it's like it's like brotherhood. Within. That's awesome. No, it's like it's not even forced. Like yeah. you know, I, I haven't talked. It was a time where we hadn't spoken. Not by ain't no heat or nothing negative, but there was a time where we hadn't spoken for years and years. Well, I thought it was heat. Oh, you're so <laughs> <laughs> no. You got to tell them the, the Ric Flair story. I don't even remember the Flair story. Uh, we had a falling out, and it was like that Friday. He sends a picture of him and Ric Flair holding oh, up. Oh, was a, that when I was at hey, Maggie's? Scott, still? fuck you, sign. <laughs> I'm like, was that when I was at Maggie's? <laughs> yeah. No, it was. It was I, you got to explain the story because I still don't. I computer. thought he was being serious. <laughs> I still can't compute it. No, <laughs> sorry. I, I'm we sitting here. Look, I'm touching. We had, <laughs> we, had, we, had, we had a little bit of a falling out. I didn't think it was really. that serious. No, it wasn't really. even me. It no, was it other wasn't. people. It's, it always, it's usually me. It was. Yeah. Not, no, it wasn't. I'm I don't think it was you either. Part. And all of a sudden, next thing you know, I get a text message from him. It was him and Ric Flair showing up in Danbury. In Danbury, 2009. Of, yes. 2009. Holding a sign up saying, hey, Scott, that. fuck you. And I'm like. <laughs> because I guess I was working. Because, again, he was said manager for said <laughs> restaurant. And again, I, I was just a part timer. It wasn't a big deal. But again, I, we were all. I was. I was batshit crazy. I was probably heroin at the time. But anyways, and I don't even care, dude. It's the truth. I don't know, really. At this point, yeah. what are we holding back? Um, but yeah, I, I, <laughs> the only thing that would have been worse if it was like Bret Hart and you. <laughs> I mean, That's Mount Rushmore strange. right there, man. Yeah. Rick fucking Flair. <laughs> and the some scars are for life. That's a chop you don't get away from. <laughs> uh, I don't and he told me 10 years later after we started talking again it that it was a rib. It was a rib. Yeah. Oh, but it was a rib. Man. It was a complete rib. Like, yeah, I, I don't have any. That. Dude, this is the kindest human being I've ever. I, honestly, I could kiss the fucking ground this kid walks on. Honestly, he's the kindest, most wonderful human being I've ever met. That's, Seriously, no bullshit. Man, that's good shit. And I, I would tell you this in front of I would say it if you weren't here. And that's the truth. That's You're good stuff. I, I love to here. see that. No, man. it's that's true. Really no, and no bullshit. He's he's an angel. Can I add Ryan Frost? In, or, um, no. Who the, I, fuck, fuck Frost. Frost. <laughs> No, come on. I want to add Brian Frost into this mix because Why? because the love that you guys... We got to get him over now, too? No, no, no. You don't no. have to do anything. Uh, you can you can no, say kidding. whatever you want. No, no, no. <laughs> um, Ryan Frost, I Ryan. Uh, he, he spoke a lot of love about both of you guys in his interview. I know. I feel like shit. Um, <laughs> um, well, how does Ryan Frost interject into all of this madness? In every single... Uh, <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. I don't know. I mean, how far, we, how, how far can we go into this without... I mean, K-Fave is still somewhat sacred, isn't it? Nah, I don't know. Hey, like yeah, I, hey, yeah, like I say, you can give us whatever you want. It could be, it could be gimmick, it could be character, it could be nothing, it could be shoot, it could be work. Whatever you want it to be, this well, is your interview. Being honest with us. He, he was, he was showing you some love. I will give you. That. All right, so um, going back to way back um, before I trained with Jason, um, I did backyard wrestling with Ryan a long time ago. <laughs> he was Hunter, and I was Scott the Patriot O'Brien. Um, <laughs> wait, 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 before I have to interrupt, there was also another wrestling name that was mentioned. Uh, could you maybe, uh, the Sugar or something? Oh, God. Please. That was Jason's gimmick for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do Rick it. Sugar. I never heard that. Oh, yeah. Ray McSugar? Rick Sugar. Rick Sugar. It's all new for me. Sugar. For me. Yeah. It was, the, it was the late 90s, early 2000s. Yeah, so yeah, I had a mark for Late 99. Sugar yeah, Ray yeah, gimmick. Yeah, I know what you're saying. <laughs> no, I know what you're saying. Yeah. You're a kid. You're a kid. <laughs> I was a you're kid. You're a kid? No. Yeah, I didn't inter uh, mean to interrupt Mr. Uh, Scott the Patriot. Is that what you said? Scott the Patriot O'Brien. Those are backyard names. Okay. And Ryan did amateur wrestling. And I was a big fan of Matt style wrestling, Greco Roman stuff. So he taught me a lot about wrestling, amateur okay. style wrestling, holes and reversals and stuff like that. And when we did back air, you know, guys were smashing flower pots over each other's head, but him and I are over there like working how to do, you know, you know, arm drags and, you know, stuff like that. And uh, eventually when I started going to school for it, I started teaching him professional wrestling on the side. Hey, this is how okay. they do in the pros. And then eventually years later, uh, when he went to school for it, you know, he was just kind of like, it was kind of like, it was just ironic. Like a give you, and take. Yeah, it was like, give you and know, take you, you helped him, he helped you, kind of, you know, you both helped one another. Yeah, and then years games. later, when yeah. him and I weren't, hadn't talked in 10 years, I had actually, because I heard, you know, PJ had kind of fallen into some hard times, and I was hitting other wrestlers up that knew you, 
Yeah. So I'm like, can you do me a favor, tell PJ I'm thinking about him or whatever. Um, and Ryan texted me on a Sunday or something. He's like, guess who I'm in the car with? I'm like, who? He's like, just incredible. Like, oh. I, was like, I was like, don't tell him you're talking to me. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, I, I actually remember that because I think Ryan and I, I didn't know Ryan for a minute if, at all, but uh, I think we were doing something in Massachusetts or New York. Like something else, you know what I mean? Like he kind of was my ride, mm-hmm. too. And that was, but there was never any real heat. I didn't know. <laughs> it was it was a it was a rib t- the wrong way. <laughs> you, you still believe in the gimmick? It's all a gimmick. I know. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a lover. <laughs> no, I know that now. I just didn't know. I didn't know. That's the really that's the funny thing. You know, all kidding aside, like I have this. Um, there's, I don't know. I'm so fake, it's not even funny. Like, the, the people that really know me, I am the most untough human being on the planet. Like, a t- 10 year old girl could kick my ass right now, right here. <laughs> but I just always had that. I always felt that like Paul Heyman taught me just do your crazy, like, just be crazy and pretend you're crazy, and people will believe it. So I just always pretended I was crazy and I was tough. Mm. Never had to prove it, because most people don't have to. I've never been in a real fist fight in my life, dude. I wouldn't know how to throw a real punch. <laughs> well, you yeah, that's, that's my punch. That's the thing. I would say, though, I mean, PJ does have a heart of gold, and that's the truth uh, about him as well. I, 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 yeah. You do. Oh. It's what it is. But, but. Yeah, no, I, I, I wish it. it, 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 it but it was crazy times, though, dude. Because seriously, all, no, real quick, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, was, I was really having a hard time. I was a heroin addict. Uh, obviously, I'm, I'm in, I've been in recovery for a long time with heroin, um, and I was just lo- I was lost, and I was just you know sometimes man you just you know you just worry about how you're even standing on your own two feet at the moment, um, and I'm I'm nowhere near fixed. Let's say I, I'm not in, I'm not using anymore. I still have the issues with alcohol, whatever. Yes, but uh, nonetheless, it was uh, it consumed me. And I think that had a lot to do with how I maybe interacted with close friends and good people in my life. And I didn't get a chance to maybe appreciate them as I should have. And I, I mean that with, no. I know, brother, I know, I know, I know. I love you. <laughs> Dude, I come I to you. You know that. Even the, I, I won't even get into it. <laughs> but if he's somebody, I don't have many people in this world at all. He's somebody that uh, I can come to as a friend. And wow, dude, I'm not crying. No. <laughs> but um, he's somebody I could really come to. That's cool. Uh, as, a, as, a, as a good friend and human being, because I don't have a lot of people. Mm-hmm. You know? So, anyways. No, and, that, that's wow, awesome, man. That's, dude. And, that back, and back in the day, we were no. working together, too. Like, I was going through a hard time myself, and he was the, we, we, we hung out every night together, and he, was, he became a surrogate member of my family. That was the truth. How, how is it seeing um, Frost and wrestling nowadays, especially you wrestling him and you having this kind of rivalry going on with him in both Battlefront Pro Wrestling? Um, how has that been, the, the, the battling of Ryan Frost for each of you, if you might kind of touch upon that? Because I find it so um, entertaining in the way it came off, and I've heard him on your podcast the entire yeah, – yeah. um, you seem to enjoy how it came off. You know, mm-hmm. um, I, ha- I have to say you bled like a pig. It was insane. Yeah. No, I mean, uh, and for us, it was there was a lot of blood. Yeah, I'm just saying. All, I mean, <laughs> no, I, look, I, I think Ryan is uh, he's he's a, he's a great wrestler, great performer, and I, I think he's he's not even. I don't think Ryan has fully realized how good he really is. He's untapped. He's untapped. Yeah. and he's still not there yet. Mm-hmm. He's still not there yet. Yeah, I, I think uh, he has all the physical tools. Mm-hmm. He has all the. He's cerebral. He's very, very smart. Very yeah. smart individual. Um, and there are certain things you can't teach. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I, I, I know it sounds easy, like, oh, okay, do this, do that, do the right. other thing. you got to figure it out for yourself. Mm-hmm. And I think he's been brought to the well. Now he's going to have to figure it out. Like, well, okay, this is my spot, and this is my guy, my character. This yeah. is how I'm going to be a, as a performer, as a professional wrestler. And I think he will get there. I think he's, he's, he's got all the talent in the world. He's very young, and he's very, you know, he's got everything. He's, he's built. He's, he's, he's just got to to grab it and go with it. He seems to think he's older, uh, getting an older uh, a jump in his, in his older life as a wrestler. No, I just, I, you know, I, I honestly just think Ryan is is 
finding himself now. Okay. I, I, I get what, it, what you're saying or mm-hmm. where you're going with it, but he's going he's gonna, to one day and sooner than later, because I see his progression and mm-hmm. how good he's become, sooner than later he's going to wake up and be like, and it, 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 dude, it's happened to me where I had no idea I was floundering uh, in the professional wrestling world where I was like, what the fuck am I doing? Mm-hmm. Uh, so much information. I don't know how to, I, how to work or what to do or to sell this, don't sell that. All of a sudden, it just it, clicks, and he'll get to that opportunity when he works with the right guy. Mm-hmm. Maybe if it's not me, it's somebody else, or when he gets that moment, the right crowd, the mm. right thing, and he's gonna realize this is it. And it, it, but it needs you need that come to Jesus moment where you realize right. this is this is this is where I become that guy. Yeah, and he'll get there. He's, I- he's, yeah, he's definitely. there. He's there. I like he's the one whole. Of the, he's one of the best in the indie scene in the in, in in the Northeast. Bottom line, the whole infamous thing I think is working for him. You yeah. know, and, yeah, and like awesome. you said, building he's his awesome. character. Yeah. He's awesome. um, you had a rival with him as well in Battlefront Pro Wrestling. Um, that was really fun, and it was kind of a uh, a mix between the storyline with him and you became part of that, but under yeah. Scotty Anarchy, not under any different crazy ring name is that where you're staying is scotty anarchy and how was the battle uh the rivalry with ryan frost well first of all i mean scotty anarchy is my that's pretty much my always my performer name I and mean, that's my i got that once because i was getting arrested in a club i was playing in with a band and the cop was taking me out the door um this is why i don't do drugs anymore um, <laughs> and the cops take me out the door and he's like well you're just mr anarchy aren't you and i'm like that's scotty anarchy Oh, you know, James Bobby. And, the, and the cops started laughing and I'm like well I get a laugh out of him and I got so sick and tired of people like messing up my last name right so I've just always gone by that and it's like if that's my name like why the fuck would I wrestle yeah. on this I'd be the human unicorn that's like, really no, that's, that's AKA you know, so Scotty Anarchy and it's people that know me it's like that's that's, that's kind of my personality yeah. Yeah. you know I don't Absolutely. think that there's people either love me or I've rubbed them the wrong way and I call them out on their shit so it's like um as far as Ryan goes, I mean, the way I look at it with with my, I mean, I couldn't beat him that night. Um, I mean, I had my moment. I got close. Yeah, yeah. Um, sharpshooter. Um, yeah. <laughs> but um, but at the same time, like if you can't beat him, join him. No, yeah. take over the company. Yeah, he comes boss. Too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, he he happened to really connect with a, a kendo stick to the back of your wife, Jeannie. Ooh, yeah. um, yeah. a, 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 how do you walk away or take that away from uh, one event and come back to the next event and not want to murder said Ryan Frost? Oh, I'm going to kill him. <laughs> it's not over. Okay, okay. You know, so this rivalry have, uh, continues is what you're saying. I'm going to book oh. him in a diaper match. No, a diaper <laughs> match. Yeah, I mean, wow. look. Uh, and this is again this is more uh, personal to him obviously than it is to me <laughs> if, you, if you mess with my brother you're gonna you know you're gonna get me and quite frankly uh ryan ryan doesn't understand quite quite yet what it is to get receded um receded? you know he's uh, yeah, receipt yeah. is that is that kind of like an inside term oh, it's an inside term it's yeah, an inside he's term. made me bleed uh he's busted me open unintentionally mm. uh you know, he's made me kind of, you know, I had to get stitches. I had to go to the hospital. I hope blah, you don't blah, mind blah. the viewers that have been hanging. That's cool, right? The, the viewers. That's all good. We've no, had that's viewers. Fine. And, yeah, fine. Yeah. and I'm just, but, uh, you know, as uh, Ryan may think it's over. And, you know, professionally it may be, but uh, it never it never goes away. It's never no, over. No, dude, it never it's goes never away. never over. Mm-hmm. You know, when you're, it, you know what, when, you, when you're in the ring with somebody and you're picking somebody up and they're, or they're picking you up and you're, you're both barely breathing and you're exhausted and you have no energy left and you're looking into each other's eyes and you still want to kill this son of a gun. <laughs> <laughs> That'll tell you something about who you are. The time frame away from the ring where you were Rick, Sh- Rick, Rick Sugar? Yeah, well, just, the time away from wrestling. So uh, never escapes. See, Scotty Anarchy works so much better. <laughs> <laughs> Back no, then no, to yeah. getting in the ring at Battlefront against Ryan. And what kind of time frame are we talking in between? <laughs> uh, when I stepped in the ring to fight Frost, it was 20 years. 20 years out of the ring? Yeah. yeah. What would yeah. make you get in the ring after 20 years? I want to kick the son of a bitch's ass. Really? Yeah. That's all it takes is yeah. wanting to kick yeah. somebody's well, ass to get in that ring? Yeah. I, I I could vouch for him. I, I mean, he's he's been a prof- he was a professional for a long time, and then he went off and did music and had his other career. And uh, but that that just burned inside of him. You know? S- same question because you were off for quite some time. Um, 
I, you might have done appearances because I've seen you do special yeah, yeah, guest yeah, yeah. referee sure. stuff sure, and sure, stuff sure. like yeah. that. Um, but in ring to where you last left off into getting in the ring with Ryan Frost, how long? Ago? I, it was, I, I would say, only a couple of months. It wasn't as oh. dramatic as, as okay. that. But uh, look, it, there's, it, there comes a certain level, and I'll, I'll identify it real quick, and I'll, I'll breeze through it. Um, when you're when you're a professional at a WWE level or an ECW level or any of the other major companies, you're wrestling four or five times a week. I was on the road 200 days a year, if not more. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's no exaggeration. He knows. Um, and but then when you settle down to an independent level, to where you're maybe wrestling uh, on a Friday Saturday basis, if you're lucky, so you're maybe getting realistically four. So uh, I was just, uh, I was at the point where I was semi, you know, I wasn't a full-time guy, but I was still semi-active. Mm-hmm. So, but it, it was just, you know, Ryan was more of a, with, with the thing with Ryan was it was more of a passion thing mm-hmm. where he came after it. He came after me. There was, he was, he was trying to make his name off of me, uh, whether it was making fun of me, you know, shaming me because I fell on hard time. Taking advantage of, uh, you know, kicking a dog while he's down. I did see the whatever. promos. I think we you all know? did, yeah. And, uh, you know, whatever. I would have done the same thing if I was him uh, 20 years ago because I have done that to a lot of people. I was the guy that uh, made fun of Tommy Dreamer's grandfather when he passed away hmm. on ECW television. Wow. Uh, and you remember that. Yeah. You know. So I, I get it. I don't uh, I don't uh, hate Ryan for it. I Almost got like kudos, dude. Golf clap for it's, you. It's, but, it, uh, it makes an impact. It's what it is. It's what it's supposed to produce, correct? It's what it's is supposed make to an produce, impact. Make a shock uh, value absolutely. or whatever. Absolutely. And uh, I, you know, I give it to him. But uh, you know, sometimes you got to be careful when you poke the bear. Um, the relationship <laughs> with know? both of you in Battlefront, and I'm, I'm keeping on Battlefront because you have quite the relationship with Dan. It is chilly out here, isn't it? It's good. Oh, it's beautiful. Uh, it, I, 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 I'm, I'm, no, I'm not selling. I'm selling a little bit, but not I, like in a I'm bad very way. skinny, and I'm freezing my ass off. <laughs> I'm fat, um, and I'm freezing my ass off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Battlefront Pro Wrestling, you have both have a relationship with Dan Gore. Is that, yes. is that correct to say? Is that how you become part of Battle well, Pro? This gentleman will probably or, tell you more Battle about Front, that, rather? but I've known Dan, I've known Dan for... Uh, Probably as long as I've been a wrestler. Oh, really? I've known Dan before he got into the wrestling business. Oh, no. Uh, just as friends. Through uh, wrestling, though? Uh, well, as fans. As fans, uh, correct. Uh, but I was already, I was in ACW, but uh, just as fan, he was not in the wow. business yet. He was a young man. Okay. Because uh, he's a bit younger than me. But, uh, yeah, I, I, you know, he's a good, he's a good dude, man. And, uh, you know, I respect his vision, and he works really hard, and he's got something really good going with him and Scotty and his mm. brother Ray. And, you know, uh, I, we, we got a lot of beautiful things coming up, you know, and uh, again, I, I follow I follow my brother over here who has a great vision for uh, the future of, of pro wrestling and what's going on. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I'm just I'm, I'm just a I'm just a cog in the wheel trying to help. I got you. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. If, if, whatever my experiences that can help these guys because they're the visionaries mm-hmm. and I'm just here to kind of try to. You know, if I could help ease it along and maybe give them some advice or whatever, but uh, I'm down, man. These guys are the fucking brains. Has They're it been awesome. a fun ride so far in Battlefront Pro Wrestling? It, it, you get to play with your buddies, man. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I love these guys, and, and and they provide a platform for us to perform, to do something we love, mm-hmm. uh, and, and also, you know, for the fans. You can't, you can't get any better, really. No, it, it's been you a know, lot of fun up there, cool, man. Dude. Yeah, it's since since cool. the first show, because I've gone to uh, yeah, yeah. every show except for one since they've yeah. started, and it's been yeah, really it's fantastic. Really cool, the know. way you see it with people standing against the wall is the way it's been since night one yeah. in Battlefront. Yeah, it, it's it's really amazing cool. how yeah. it's it's kept that longevity so far. And I know it's only been a little bit over a year, but it's still hard to maintain sure. that crowd over and over you just gotta on your events. To what you got to do is you got to go in there every single night like it's Madison Square Garden like it's you mm-hmm. know and I've had the pleasure of performing in all these amazing places uh, and I honestly when I do stuff like that uh, I, I go at it like this is mine right I, I have owner not ownership not a financial uh, don't don't get it mistaken like a financial ownership but I own this moment right exactly this, company. this is half of yeah me. yeah this and is it, my creativity right and, now and, and, it, and it just uh, and I think fans see that authenticity I hope I hope and, and you know maybe sometimes I don't do it all the way but you know I always try to give them the best I can and, mm. I, think, and I hope they see it 
And um, you know, it, I just think it, it's, it's just a really cool deal at the end of the it day. Is. It's been when really they see fun. the end of the, the the end product that we're trying to put out there, I, I think it's just a really great experience, and I think the fans at the end of the day benefit from it. We, we've been having a lot of fun. It, it has evolved into a different company since when it first started. Um, your relationship with Dan Gore, how did that come about? It's actually funny because um, I when I left wrestling 20 years ago, I hated wrestling. Like I couldn't watch it. Oh really? I left on very bitter terms. No product, no nothing. You didn't nothing. watch really. I couldn't. I couldn't bring my. I've always felt that watching wrestling was almost like watching my ex-girlfriend with a new good-looking boyfriend. <laughs> you know, I was like, I couldn't. Yeah, I it. Yeah. Like, because I loved it. I grew up with it. My great uncle was a wrestler. Like, I was. You know, I grew up on. You know, I, my family. I was raised on WWE, okay. NWA wrestling. Um, and uh, when I finally, when I, I left over, it was a. An issue. I had some issues with with some people, and I didn't really trust the business and I wanted to get out and now I, ironically 20 years later you know the music industry is all shits <laughs> the wrestling's a hell of a lot better <laughs> but um I um and finally like my nephew Steven hi Steven although if you listen to the language you use today <laughs> bad parenting um my, my nephew Steven wanted an action figure for a birthday and I went out and bought him this figure of this wrestler that I never heard of before because I didn't know anybody for a little while, I knew some of them. I knew the roses and stuff like that. And but um, and I'm like, Ugh, wrestling. And then I started talking to Ryan again. He was going to school. I would go to a couple of his matches um, to support him because he supported me back in the day. And next thing you know, I started talking to him, and it was more through him and you know his situation. The music video idea that we came up with as we were talking. Okay. Um, the C and Red song was a song that I wrote about me, and I'm talking to him about what he's going through. Like, <laughs> it actually sounds like it's more about you than me <laughs> and like so let's you know then we'll use wrestling to tell the story of this song that's make it all a metaphor for life uh struggling and trying to get back again and having the guts to kind of deal with your problems head on and stuff like that and i so i start you know i start watching wrestling again to try to you know so i'm not such a novice anymore getting that yeah and then i'm looking around for a company that i wanted to work with for the video and ryan had suggested I had gone through a couple of companies before that. And Ryan suggested Battlefront. I went out and checked it out, and it was just like, it was like the, watching the fan reaction, watching the people that were there. Um, everyone, that, every I've, I've been in other locker rooms, but the locker room in, at Battlefront is like they're, they're very tight. It's very family, yeah. mm -hmm. you know. And I've seen it in wrestling too, you know, other places. But it was like it was just very, it just everything felt right at that moment. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was busting his balls for being a horrible referee that night. <laughs> Wrestlers were bleeding because of you. That's bad officiating. <laughs> I was heckling the shit out of him. <laughs> yeah. So, and he just, he was like looking over me like, asshole. <laughs> uh, but long story short, um, yeah, so we started talking about it. The, you know, everything worked from day one. And God, I just fell back in love with the business again. That's you awesome. Know? And a lot of it's the people that I'm working with. Yeah. And, um, you know, I think Lou was the one that originally suggested I did the match. And I was just like, what? Really? Because he said I took a bump. He was like, you really know how to take a bump. Did you work before? I'm like, kind of yeah, did. Yeah, I remember that. Too. <laughs> yeah. I remember that. And I was like, then they're like, well, why don't Ryan fight Scott? I'm like, <laughs> holy <laughs> crap, shit. just like that. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Um, And you were in agreement to just jump right well, back he, in I like mean, that? He's a, he's a well-trained, I mean, he was trained. No, I, I, you know, so he's been, he's well-trained. I, well -trained. Mean, I, I definitely was, feel that, oh, but. Rusty, though. Yeah, well, but. Rusty, I had to go back and learn that. Yeah. You know, a lot of people don't know that necessarily right away but right he's been off the rip he's one of you know he's very well trained and he nice. knows his game he knows all the game very yeah. well very good in mechanics <laughs> the brain might be there but the body <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just that, I'm just saying oh. you know the deal <laughs> <laughs> so and then um yeah then eventually like i would you know ryan and i started booking some stuff P went, went to pj with it and you know, like they're like the three of us together were like coming up with some fucking gold you mm. know and it was like really it all just seemed to work out every time and it was like this magic thing and you know dan had asked me if i would do some more stuff and i was like yes please let's that, do this that's awesome and now we're we're doing our own little splinter group of battlefront pro extreme yeah we're going to be doing um you know a little bit of a different similar to what battlefront pro has been but a little bit different so i spoke of the evolution of the company before and before i get into that um getting back to seeing red video the song itself you're saying was written you wrote it about yourself the lyrics yes and then the the music video is coming to head there's a vision for it just incredible it's kind of surrounding what he's gone through if you will and it just seems to float right over and work perfectly with just incredible yeah well, i mean it's 
I don't ever write because it was really cool and it did work. It, the, the whole narrating and everything, you yeah. know, I really dug it. I don't, I don't ever write anything like it's never autobiographical. Mm -hmm. It's always more of a like take personal situations and make it, make it generalized enough so that people can relate to it. Okay. And I wrote the song about you know taking some hits, um, negativity, you know the media, the press. Mm -hmm. uh, just assholes that you meet in life come along and everyone's telling you what an idiot you are for doing what you want to do. And basically just say like, fuck you, this is my <laughs> life. And I'm just going to plow through this. And I'm, you know, it's like, if you guys are all sitting here talking about what an asshole I am, then I really don't give a fuck about you. Mm. I'm just going to, I'm like, I'm, that's driving me. There's no greater motivation in life sometimes than spite. Now I'm glad you're saying this and that we are definitely getting into a battle, uh, battlefront pro extreme. Um, Blabbermouth and, and some yeah. of the, the written uh, media out there. You seem to have some kind of relationship with, uh, with a couple of them. What the hell is going on out there? Uh, Blabbermouth and I always got, uh, they were always cool with us. Okay. They, 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 I mean, <laughs> their fans are morons. Uh, some of them, most of them. Um, I had Metal Sucks wrote a really nasty article about us. Um, it's so funny, like, you know, get the whole, don't quit your day job. I'm like, do you have any idea how shitty I am in my day job? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, we took some beating. Um, you know, I mean, I, I it's, uh, my, my, um, you know, like my wife had come from another band and my crossing Rubicon is drastically different than them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, number one, I don't have a salt life, salt life sticker on the back of my car. I don't wear camouflage, <laughs> you know, like I'm not like, it's like, it's just like, it's not my thing mm -hmm. uh and uh and you know they're i don't lip sync on stage you know stuff like that and you know their fan base uh, really got personal i mean they were threatening to shoot me wow i got two well, times a i had people, heat. Yeah, a lot of heat yeah. well, I mean, you know it, but that just goes to show you how talented this kid is and you know and one thing and this is i know you're gonna probably get hot at me for saying this but i'm gonna say it anyways no when we there's were, no way I'm getting hot out here. It's freezing. We, we were, I was talking to. I'm friends with Billy Corgan for a long time, and we've gone. We, he's known Billy as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and I showed when Seeing Red video came out. I was very proud of it. I, the job these guys did were the song was amazing, the video is amazing. I was just so happy to be part of it. And I was like, Hey Billy, check this out. You know, I kind of wanted to see what he thought. Mm -hmm. And he's like, uh, Yeah, you were all right in the video, kind of am, but the song was really good. <laughs> so you know, so got, one person liked the song. <laughs> like, you got a Grammy Award winning fucking rock mega god, yeah. uh, you know, saying the song is good. No. So you know what? It, people love the music. I love the music. Mm -hmm. So many people I know love the music. And there's really something there to it. And I really hope that uh, somewhere that this whole thing can, you know, because he's had this in his head for a long time, and I, and I see it too, and only because he brought it to me, kind of, and I started thinking about it. Rock and roll and professional wrestling have always had... Yeah, an intertwining of each other, for sure. ECW, all the music, all the mm -hmm. cool videos, the shit was all about music and wrestling and mm -hmm. the right combination, and with this awesome music and cool-ass wrestling, I think... Um, we we just the future is so bright and there's so much amazing stuff we got to do we're just getting started dude yeah these, man. i mean with these guys you got to be kidding no you know? i bring that Absolutely. up specifically because uh, we talk about perseverance and pushing through and doing and, and cre uh, creating your dream and making it happen um does that shit feed you or do you look at it and be like you know what i'm depressed for a week because these assholes in that house how do you soak that in i think I, I it kind of worked in stages. There was a point in time I was depressed, and there was a point in time I went to therapy for six months over it. Um, and then eventually it got to the point where I was like, <laughs> like, like I had somebody else. I mean, I quit my, I walked away from my career to do music. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I had a lot of money. That's right. That's right. Um, and people tell me I'm an idiot for doing it. I'm like, you know what? When I someday when I die, no one's gonna answer for what I do with other than me. You know, and it's like I don't. Um, like I said, a lot of it was it's 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 ten, it's twofold. Number one, there's the need and want and desire to create something. And to create something different, unique, whatever. And then on the other hand, there's the, <laughs> I'm going to prove to the world that they're wrong and I'm right. Mm. And I think both of those things, you know, kind of fuel everything that I do. What, what was a previous career if we might know? Well, I was the regional director for Restaurant Corporation. I started out as a guy that was running my friend's restaurant. Okay. And Business management kind of guy. He gave me the job when I was down yeah. there. Right, right. And he was a very, yeah, he was very prominent. And I became the guy that opened multiple locations. Yeah. And yeah. they wanted me to, you know, they wanted to build up. You know, it was a great gig and I loved it. Mm -hmm. But in the back of my head, I'm like, this is my life. And I'm like, I, I, I wasn't playing music and I really, 
miss doing it. Mm. And I started doing it and eventually got some success from it and got better and better shows and better bookings and following. And there was actually people that liked it. <laughs> and I was like, I kind of needed to do this, you know? And I, and after I made that jump, I lost a lot. I lost my career. I had gone through a divorce all in one shot. It was like one weekend. Oh, um, and I lost band members over it um, because the whole idea of going professional, it's like, it's all, it's not as, it's not as, fun sounding as it really yeah, is it really, mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. you know if you have a wife and kids in a house and a mortgage yeah. you're f yeah. you know um but um i got through it i'm much better off i'm very happy now and everything seems to be and it, i think eventually you kind of just you can't make people think a different way sure. and once you realize that you just do you you know it's just it's simple very liberating. That. so right very now liberating. are you doing just music or are you doing other things what do you got going I on i have i have a day job uh <laughs> i wait tables um I figured I was you know, making like one, one sixteenth of what I made made five years ago in a year now. Huh? But hey, I pay my bills. You I know? got you. I got you. Um, and I that uh, between crossing Rubicon and Battlefront Pro Wrestling, that's kind of like my, mm. that's my. I get to, I get to work on all my passions now. You know. Uh, same thing. Are are you? Do you have a day job? Or are you uh, still doing wrestling kind of I, actively regularly? I sound like the biggest scumbag of all time. Um, I do not have a day job, although I probably should. Um, I wrestle every weekend, okay. uh, but I don't nearly make as much money as I need to. Probably should get a day job, uh, but uh, at this point, I don't. I feel unfortunately. you. Unfortunately, I feel you. But uh, you know, it, it's it's kind of hard. I mean, for me, man, I'm 45 years Different old. Different points dude. in your life. It, it's it's not it's not the point of doing. And this is wow. I'm going way too. I don't know. I might should even be saying this shit. <laughs> for me, dude, this is this is stone cold real. Uh, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Wrestling is wrestling. just what you've I've been, known. I've, dude, I've, done, I've been a pro wrestler all my life. I, I the only you. other fucking job I've had was this kid fucking gave me a goddamn job. <laughs> I was pretty goddamn good at it. I really <laughs> loved the fucking job. <laughs> but anyways, no, no. seriously. Like, no, that pizza so, wasn't just the greatest. <laughs> 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 but uh, no, no, seriously, though, I, I, I don't know, man. I don't know. But don't know. wrestling is uh, what you know. It's what I know, and it's really um, what I'm looking for. I, I, have, I feel I don't you. Know what I'm, I don't know where I'm going. I'm 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 completely at a at a flip flop. So them, music you know? and wrestling uh, kind of got turned upside down with the internet in yeah. many different oh, ways. It. Killed okay. <laughs> now, with the music, um, everything is sold by tracks for the most part, unless you come out with an album and you do it by an album, like you know you have a uh, hard disk sure. and stuff. I carry that torch all day long. Um, I see that you've taken technology and ran with it because you've got 3D hologram cool shit popping off of your uh, CD and stuff. Could you kind of talk to us about that? Because maybe not everybody knows about this kind of stuff. <laughs> Again, it's the guy that does the shirt design, directed the music video, Kevin James Freer. Um, when I, 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 to me, I, I always, the music industry has changed and the industry has been hurt a lot by the internet. But at the same time, music industry has changed in a way that now vinyl is the number one purchased form of music now and multicolors right. might I add right. they do yeah. it in multi yeah. a lot of multi colors and, yeah um and I kind of like I never got over the whole I buy a record I read the liner notes I check out the album art and I kind of wanted to do that to I don't want to say a generation of people that are um uh attention deficit it, it, it is it is attention yes. um and I wanted to do something that was going to make people want to purchase a physical record, mm -hmm. force people to read the liner notes, force people, not force them, but like, they're in, to try to grab encourage. their interest. And originally yeah. I had this really dumb idea where I was going to have the record come with a little red magnifying glass, like the Transformers toys used to have okay. and have all these hidden messages and puzzles That's in the, so in the cool. booklet. Yeah. And Kevin was working on that and he added, we were, we were doing it. And then all of a sudden he's like, he came out with this augmented reality app and I'm like, he showed it to me. I'm like, oh, that's so much cooler. <laughs> we were doing all the symbol, all the messages and everything that are hidden in the album cover are there, but they're animated now and they change in front of you. Yeah. And, um, is, you know. Is that a physical thing now? Do you, what? Do you really have that? Like, yeah, if you buy the record, can... you hold the, you download the app. You have that? Yeah. You scan the app. <laughs> yeah. It's in... uh, what? I'm mad. It's, I'm mad. it's yeah. insane. Why, why am I. I'm going to fight you right now. I want a copy. <laughs> right? See? So, and I kind of like, but like a lot of that, like, again, it was like, again, show. I conceptualized and Kevin just ran with it. And just yeah, that's with awesome. Came that's that same reason, though, that I love the same stuff. When you, you used to get an LP, man, you would open it up. Absolutely. I never forget, one of my first albums, 83, I'm old, 
Michael Jackson Thriller. And it's not, I'm not saying that that's the kind of music I necessarily like, but uh, back that was day, my first record. You know, huge. And you'd open it up, huge. though, there was like the, you know, the, the, the artwork and was the amazing. It was him with a little fucking tiger. tiger. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Corny, corny, but, you know, still, it's like you were as a kid, you were like, yeah, definitely. And you would read like Quincy Jones. Who's Quincy Jones? And yeah, this guy. And you would start learning and you know, stuff. Yeah. Quiet Rock Queen. Uh, oh my God, what was it? Sheer Heart. Not Sheer Heart Attack. News of the World. News of the World with the robot mm-hmm. and the people like uh, I remember they were like yeah. kind of falling off and the robot. Dude, it was like it was like impactful for me. I was like, holy shit! You know, it was like a big deal. The art was a big deal. It was part of the the experience of, of mm-hmm. you know listening to that music. And it was you know it was awesome. Yeah. So cool. And I know kids don't. I mean, I know it's it's a different age, but I hope we could bring that back. I mean, I hope these guys. A, a lot of retro know. stuff seems to make its way back. Not it being, all does. Dude. And, and Everything not even that's say, old becomes new, and new right. becomes old. And I'm not saying you know 50s, 60s, but I, you know like the 80s, 90s are kind of doing a little circle back here and there, fashion it and new music it and stuff does. like that. I want to press vinyl. I just don't know if I can afford it. <laughs> um, I, what really uh, I'll buy it. made me think of something specific when I seen there was a video of you actually doing it with the app over the CD um, my nephew had a coloring book and these dragons would pop right off. All you have to do is get the app. It was a yeah, Crayola thing. That's cool. And it would come off and it would flap its wings and it would look at you. And it was really, really cool. And that's what exactly that your uh, video reminded me of. Mm-hmm. Um, it's got to be really cool to be part of all of that creative process um, because Cross and Rubicon is your baby. Yeah. Uh, so it's got to be pretty gratifying to see all of what's come to head right now with the whole album, the tracks, the videos. You guys are playing live shows. You got a tour coming up. How do you sleep? I don't. Yeah. Okay. Never. Yeah, he's a maniac. Uh, you okay. Know, he scares me. Actually. I don't. Actually, it's been weird. For the longest time, I couldn't fall asleep at night. And I couldn't wake up in the morning. Now I can't. I fall asleep right away, but now I wake up like really early. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> That's so weird. So do you do that like fainting go chick? <laughs> no, it's a long, slow burn. <laughs> it takes forever. It's, it's, it's always working. Actually, I, and it's, again, I keep putting him over, but Kevin um, would literally get text messages from me like 3.30 in the morning. Yeah. Hey, what about this? We should do this. <laughs> oh, man, poor guy. And a lot of the stuff, too, I want to point out, like what was originally the concept of the story there was so much stuff that I wanted that we just couldn't do, but he was able to find footage that he did that we never planned. Wow. And he was able to tell that story. The shit with the, the, the barbed wire and the fist thing was not planned. That was like, I was like, fuck it, I want to do this. That was awesome, um, and it worked he amazing. he my hand up at the end, he goes, ah. So originally, <laughs> originally I had this, I had a fade out scene that I wanted where I kind of wanted, which we almost did uh, the night where Frost and I got in the ring together, and I kind of wanted to do that. Um, Probably one of the coolest, credible stories I've ever, to give you an idea of like where his heart is. Um, we were driving up, and he, he was going on and on about how he, he take him, it would take a lot to get him back in the ring again. You know, he hates wrestling. It's like, I've been there. And it was, it was cool, because we first walked in, and this is the part of Just Incredible or PJ that people don't necessarily see, um, and why I love the guy so much. We're driving in, we walk in the door, and people are talking to him. He's just getting hounded by everybody. Um, you know, out of all respect, but you know, right. he just, you know, and eventually, like, I'm like looking around for him at one point because I want to ask him a question. And he's gone. And I'm looking around, looking around, couldn't find him, and I just see him standing by the side of the ring, and no one's in the ring. Miraculously enough, for the first time ever before a show, <laughs> and he's just like, "Come on, get in," and he rolls, he rolls in the ring. And I come in, and we start going through. He starts giving me some pointers and doing stuff. And we're throwing, and we're laughing like two, we're laughing like twelve-year-old girls at a Justin Timberlake concert. It, it, this is specifically at Battlefront Pro Wrestling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was I remember, there. I, remember, I was actually yeah. there watching you guys do it, and I went to pull out my camera, and I go, "No, that ain't a good idea." It was. A, it was. And then that. at the end, I look over to him. I go, "Yeah, you hate wrestling, don't you?" Like, Son of a bitch. <laughs> and it was just kind of like you see that that heart. And I said, I was like that night. I went home, and I poor Kevin. You said that. Uh, I was yeah, like, I want, right. I want to show that heart of PJ that people don't see. Mm. You know, like if you if you get dirt sheets or if you read the news or whatever, right. you don't see that part of them. And I had this whole concept we were going to do this Rocky three ending. Yeah. And, <laughs> right, yeah. and it just couldn't, we couldn't get the time and it just wouldn't work out. And, uh, but Kevin did it when he did, first of all, but we did the Impact Players pose. Yes. That was just him and I fucking around. <laughs> Not only did Kevin yeah. cover it, but he actually did it, timed it to the music. Yes. And, like, and then at the end, he goes to hold my hand up. That was just a, but that's, yeah. And he just does that. Yeah. You and I both like look at yeah. each other and we start laughing. <laughs> but that's, but that's the, 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 to me, it was 
so easy and natural because yeah it became like, natural well, right. no not even that ECW was all about music anyways and like you almost knew the break of the song and it's all right, like I knew it was kind of coming it's like let's go kids <laughs> let's, do it. let's go kids yeah, yeah it was, you know it's like it's, it's, it's your blood it's what yeah. you do and that's the fun it's like that's when it becomes easy that's when it's Passion. You're That's taking that moment and yeah, making it. Yeah. It's not hard, and it shouldn't be that hard because when you really love what you're doing and you love the people you're doing it with, it's effortless. And that mm. was like that's like one of those where it just happens. Like the best moments just happen, mm -hmm. you know. And as much as we could try to recreate some some you know can't rec uh, live aid Queen '85 can't recreate that if nope. you wanted to. Well, I said the one. But you know what I'm saying? It's like one, shit happens, right? That's the one those shot are the I best wanted. Moments. The one shot I wanted that you did and you killed it when you did like you you be turned went from being PJ to just incredible, like oh, right okay. before you walked through the curtain and it's yeah, like yeah. you got it, that look in his face that psycho look, and so you saw just incredible that moment when you walked out you looked like just I felt like I was teleported back to 1998 again, <laughs> um, and it looked like yeah. And then at the end, you went right back. You, at the end, that, that last moment, you turned into PJ again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it was like, it was like, yeah, that's the guy. That's my, that's my best friend right there. Yeah. So yeah. there's a lot of fun still to be had in wrestling. Oh, absolutely. At least, yeah. yeah. At least for me. Which least, brings me hopefully. into Battlefront Pro Extreme. Now, this kind of thing just popped out of nowhere. It's like I call it like a subdivision of Battlefront Pro Wrestling out of Ludlow, Mass, and the Gores. Um, this kind of just popped out of nowhere. Um, we, you actually grabbed me, and we did this cool little promo uh, at, during intermission about said uh, extreme. And I'm just like, what the fuck is going on around here? Now, the evolution of Battlefront Pro Wrestling, um, Dan Gore and the Gores, they like the, the hardcore stuff. Um, but that wasn't their focus in the company when it started. But it's kind of evolved into trickling over into one or two matches within the company, or maybe sometimes three, because they do put on a lot in one evening. Um, there's a lot of weaponry. There's a lot of no disqualifications. There's a lot of blood. There's just a lot of going on in Battlefront Pro Wrestling. Um, that's obviously your wheelhouse, if you will, your forte. Sure. Yep. Um, you're still down with that whole heart, obviously, because you bled like a pig with Ryan. Um, is that something you would do regularly if oh, you were? Um, and, 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 and when you're not wearing a suit and smoking a cigar with me in our office. And I had to. It, it's funny. I was going through. Uh, just I was alone today. I, I was going through some memories, and I pulled up a match that I had with Terry Funk yeah. in 2003, and I actually posted it online a bunch of places, and because I hadn't seen it in years. And it was the only ever match I had, a singles match with Terry Funk, and he actually put me over with a super kick. A one, two, three, and I beat him for the, uh, you know, uh, one of the titles in Philadelphia. But anyways, and just looking at that, and it makes you, seeing a guy like Terry Funk, mm -hmm. I, I mean, this is a long time ago, but he just had to be in his late 50s mm -hmm. at the time. And I'm still, you know, I'm in my 30s, whatever, but... Uh, the passion it, hardcore for me is not necessarily blood and guts right it's the passion of mm -hmm. the business and that's he embodied that for me and that's like why i was like kind of marking out for myself and like looking at stuff like wow i really sometimes i look back and i'm like i did this shit <laughs> like, sometimes you don't realize it. right I'm like this is me and terry funk like i almost have to see it myself so you don't to realize i did it you don't watch your product yeah. at all I, I don't like to watch myself oh I really i don't i'm very critical only when he's masturbating <laughs> well, so we already we went through that earlier very pretty yeah <laughs> but no, no I, I really don't like to because um yeah you know, it's just a thing. I feel uh, you. Know, I, uh, you're always critical, but uh, so watching this match specifically, but just it just brought up a, a, a thing that um, reminded me of of the attitude of what ECW kind of meant and what kind of what we hope to do with Battlefront Pro Extreme mm -hmm. is. It's not necessarily about extreme as far as uh, garbage. You know, boom, like hitting people. You with will not stuff. see any. Bar aluminum wire. foil it, trash it, it, cans. It's about, it's about, it's about, <laughs> for me, what extreme always meant, and I know Paul Heyman felt this way with ECW, and I hope to, my part in Battlefront Pro Extreme will be the same, is the passion, the love of the business, mm -hmm. uh, the fact that a guy like Terry Funk was out there in, you know, his late 50s, you know, taking bumps off of stairs for me and going through tables for me and mm -hmm. I, you know, just watching this stuff. And hopefully I can do this for the next generation of kids. Mm. Uh, just, it's about the love of the business. It's about passion. It's about putting on the best show we can possibly put on. For mm -hmm. me, that's what Extreme meant. And I think that's what ECW in its 
in its essence, really was. It was, I mean, I know at first it was blood and guts, but really what Paul Heyman wanted was, you know, it's about the passion for professional wrestling. That the extreme part was we love pro wrestling, and that's what it's about. And for me, I think that, I hope that's what Battlefront uh, Pro Extreme will be, mm. is just a love of pro wrestling and just putting out the best product we can at the time and whatever fits the bill. You know, it doesn't have to be blood and guts. It doesn't have to be ladder matches or tables and ladder, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. It just, you know, just go out there and just just give your all and, and, and just put out the best show you can on a, on a you know, weekly, monthly, whatever basis. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, for me, that's what I want. So this is a partnership between both of you? Is that, is that what's and going on here? And yeah. the Gores. And a lot of, too, like, I mean, my biggest influences, I mean, like, we're going back... Yes, I was in I was a WWF mark back in the eighties. Sure, uh, but oh, I kind of went into like sure. I then I fell in love with the NWA. Um, I went I fell in love with ECW because to me ECW was doing the NWA gimmick. It was exactly. that's what it's, it was. Yeah, it's it's yeah yeah. The, I mean, when I say extreme, like the wrestling was better. Mm -hmm. the, right, the, it wasn't the, necessarily the trash. Is the, what I'm trying to say. And yeah. the, 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 but, I mean, you had the violence as well, but like everything was so focused. Like you have Jerry Lynn and Rob Van Dam. Sure, and then you have. Balls Mahoney versus New Jack. Like, <laughs> it was like extreme in different directions. Yeah, it was yeah, like, yeah. and I think a lot of the, Jerry and Super Crazy. Yes, some of the best professional wrestlers, luchadors, mm -hmm. Japanese wrestlers, like pure wrestlers. So it was, you know, that's exactly what he said. So is that yeah. the model you're going at uh, like, after right in now? In those directions, like, like it's going to be like, it's like every style of wrestling you're going to see is going to be extreme in one way or another. It's going to be, it's like, uh, not to use a modern day. But like when you watch an AEW show now, mm -hmm. every match is a drastically different match than the it, one before. It is. The, the only difference with AEW and, and, and the rest of them right now, because they haven't been out much, is the storylines aren't there yet. Yes. But they're starting to build. So it takes a little bit. So we'll see where that goes. Hopefully they run with something create, creative because they got a lot of effing minds behind those mm -hmm. scenes over there. That's for sure. And we're going to have we're gonna have some pretty serious rivalries. We've got some great... Uh, you're, you're gonna see some great storytelling in that ring, and you're gonna see some great storytelling in the back. We're talking about doing a separate YouTube channel to keep people informed sure, what's going absolutely. on. Okay. Yep. And um, yep. Battlefront Pro Extreme is gonna travel. Uh, yep. Our we're playing. We're we're we're, we're working in, in our backyard for the first show, but our second show is gonna be in Jewett City, uh, oh, down okay. by the casino. Yeah. Um, great, great, great area. There used to be an independent wrestling show that was out in that area. Um, and they fold it up. So okay. there's a built-in wrestling town that's just dying for... Nice. Yep. Um, uh, another thing, too, we're going to have a live hard rock or heavy metal band at every show. Um, I noticed on the first date, um, could you could you tell the fans out there, who is the first band going to be performing live? Not Crossing Rubicon. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I had, um, I, I, um, I'm very excited. The band that I have coming out first is a band called Fear the Masses. Okay. Uh, they're alt-metal, uh, hip-hop, new, uh, almost new metal. Um, they carry on a lot of subgenres like like Rubicon does, where they're almost like their own entity. Uh, these guys have been. There's a band that I looked up to when I first started um, playing music again, and they're guys that I've been. I'm, I'm honored to call friends. Uh, their singer uh, Josh uh, Josh Moore. He actually sang on a track on the new Rubicon record. Oh, nice! Actually, he did the he did the he did the rap part on uh, Active Aggression. Okay. There was no way in hell I was gonna. Play. In 1991, <laughs> I could rap like the best of them. Not anymore. Um, I wanted to kick my own ass. So how are you gonna do that? Will it be like the band pre-show? What's gonna happen? It works out perfect. I and mean, why this works in the hardcore gimmick as well? Um, we're gonna have we're gonna have about six matches a show. It's gonna be. Less matches, longer matches. The guys to work, they gotta work. They gotta know how to work and they gotta know how to tell a story. Okay. Um, every match should keep everyone at the edge of their seat. So there'll be less of, I hate to interrupt, but there'll be less of the five minute matches, oh, if absolutely. you will. Oh, yeah. yeah. In, in Battlefront Pro absolutely. Extreme. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. before, like, the last match of the night is gonna be a barbed wire match. Uh, the. <laughs> I can't breathe. <laughs> I can't breathe. So you want blood and guts, you're going to get it. It's effing Len out of the end. Dirt back. I can't <laughs> no. breathe. Oh, my God. I can't I believe know. you guys signed that up. I know. I've been pushing for that for months. That's the gores. They, they that dropped that insane. on my left. I'm like, I'm like we're, we're, we're starting this off. <laughs> Everything that I had that was making me a little nervous going into this, and they put that on the table. Hey, I'm like, that's, that's good stuff. Yeah. We're okay. Yeah. They had our back, and that's great. I'm excited. Yeah. So, But while, they, while they're setting up the ring, we're going to have the band play. Oh, no shit. So you're going to go from watching wrestling, nice, yeah. band play, 
Boom. So right the bin will be in a separate corner or space, yes. if you will. It's a, one of the great criticisms from AEW's last paper, you know, the all out pay per view was uh, the, the amazing, amazing ladder match from mm -hmm. Lucha Brothers and the Young Bucks. Was then they went straight into the uh, the main event with Jericho right. and uh, Hangman Adam Page. Uh, there was no. It almost was like you know you had him up here and then it almost like Page right. and, and you know. It, 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 so so you, what this is is just simply a not just for that reason, but a reason to a you got to set up the, the ring for mm -hmm. the barbed wire mm -hmm. a but also you're going to give it, the crowd an opportunity to like switch switch gears you right know, listen to some great music. You know, and then while this is happening, and then once the music is over, it's almost like you know what I mean. You're it kind going, of it's you're, you're giving the ride. Yeah, you know, you don't want to go. You can't just keep going up without you know what I mean. And I think that's a lot of the criticism that the only criticism I had of the AEW All Out pay per view uh, was that reason. And I think you know again that we thought of he thought, Scotty thought about this a long time ago, and, and it's genius though. But the band thing, uh, it, it's not just a gimmick. It's not just a way to waste time. It's a way to. It's, it's an attitude. We want this company mm -hmm. to be about music, mm -hmm. about a, an attitude, a, a gimmick. You know, it's, it's just like a lifestyle. It's it's just like what ECW kind of was too, and I hate to always go back to it, but ECW was more than just hardcore garbage wrestling. It was music. It was it was a style. It was an attitude, mm -hmm. like the Attitude Era kind of a thing. And and what he's trying to do is bring creative, awesome music, awesome wrestling put it together because wrestling and music have always gone together yeah it's just never been presented quite frankly properly as a as its own entity nobody's ever done it really successfully and i really like what we're doing and i love his vision for it and i think that we have a real opportunity to do something really cool i i, I dig it i dig the concept because the reason why i ask is because i've seen bands yourself included um doing a pre-show or maybe like a two song thing or a three song thing during intermission sure. or whatever yeah um but the, the, this gives the fans that will be coming to the battlefront pro extreme a multi-experience experience, exactly. experience exactly. Like, yeah exactly and yeah. you're getting to know new music that you've never heard of you might not like it you might be more in a country or rappers but but you know what i'm saying but you'll still get to hear new music and people might dig it and buy their stuff my my whole hope for this is it's it's an experience the, the whole mm -hmm. battle for an extreme thing will be an experience music wrestling the whole thing i want mm. it all to to at the end of the day come together because it really is it's an attitude it's an experience it's it's music it's wrestling i mean sights and, and crazy things happening and i mean it's, it's just it's really cool and i i, I just i'm so looking forward to it and I, I just think it's dope and nobody's done it really to the way i want it done or at least i envision it it's gonna be amazing you know, I, I can't I, wait I, to I'm see the so, future i'm so stoked for it dude it's, to me it's it's I, also, I want i'm digging into my bag of tricks for different hardcore match ideas too like i want to bring back oh uh, there's so much stuff that i want to bring back that we haven't seen in hardcore in forever i want to bring i want to bring i want dog collar matches oh, i want I bull rope matches I love, I love like when we did the the lumberjack match i mean you were a king lumberjack yeah, yeah I, I, was, I was a lumberjack <laughs> baby i want to bring that <laughs> stuff excuse me real quick are we taping yeah we were taping I, is there, I there, so there it's right down there all the way down you there. could i mean all right, we, all all right. right. We could wrap this up right after because we are on the Battlefront Pro uh, Extreme here. Sorry. Yeah. So I, this might be the tail end because I would not want to take everything out of you guys. Hopefully, we could do a sequel down the road. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Separately, absolutely. together again. I don't care because. Together is better. Uh, yeah. I, and I know I didn't divulge on the WWE, WWF, ECW days because no, that's, that's right. not what no, I wanted to be no, focused no, this on. This is all about Battlefront. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, absolutely. Um, so we still have plenty to talk about if we could do a sequel down the road. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, totally. So we have November 9th coming to head, which is going to be the very first uh, show for Battlefront Pro Extreme. And uh, like he said, uh, uh, the, main <laughs> the main event is a no-rope barbed wire match with uh, Dirtbag Dan and Len Onity, which is going to be insane. Now, from, and, and if I remember correctly, I talked to Len about this. Um, I don't think there's been a barbed wire match like this in Connecticut in like ever. well over 20 ever, years. I don't or think it's ever I think there's it's exactly. only happened one time. Who, who, who? I think I don't. I don't even know who that would be. So let, let's see if we could maybe divulge, get some information. Let's. Yeah. I, I'd really love to figure this yeah, out I'd like to do because it. you That's could cool. be creating history. Mm -hmm. And I know we're not in Connecticut. I mean, I'm in Connecticut now, but I mean, you, the the show will be up at the Elks Lodge, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. And and Ludlow, where uh, Battlefront is, is homed out, uh, home based at. Um, 
<laughs> you said you call your uh, director like three in the morning. You guys must have ideas just, November 9th is coming, November 9th is coming. What can we do? We, I have all of these ideas. Are you calling each other in the middle of the night? Well, 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 actually, we had a meeting two weeks ago, and like the rest of the night, him and I, I actually went to a wrestling show that night, and we're like texting each other back and forth. I want this guy. I want this guy. It's like, yeah, it's like we're like shopping. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it what definitely. do you think of this type of match? Definitely very passionate, man. Yeah. I just, you know, I, I never like, for me as a creator, I always like to, uh, to see what what happens, mm -hmm. I don't like to plan too much. And of course, you have to plan in advance. But I, I just like to uh, to see what is given. Like the universe will just give you some cool shit mm -hmm. and opportunities that sometimes we won't even see until it's in front of you. So I just, man, we have such a you know, Battlefront has has, has so many great performers. I mean, just Len Oddity. I've known him for at least 10, 12 years. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, never had a real big opportunity, but a, a great wrestler talented passionate yeah yeah passionate anything, is definitely anything. the word yes you know dan another one they're back then i mean oh, he's, yeah. he's 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 another amazing one. he's really? a great great a, a, he's a great human being yeah but he's a again a passionate great these guys have something to prove and they they're trying to make a name for themselves right they want a platform we're giving them that platform so it's not a it's you know we're just we're just saying hey this is take the ball. Yeah, this Run is your playpen. Take the yeah. Dirt Bag Dan wants to someday work uh, David Arquette in a death match. Dan, if there's any way I can book that, I promise. I'm working on it. Yeah. I, I tagged him when the, <laughs> when the whole skewer thing was in Lenadity's head from yeah. a couple battlefronts ago. I tagged our cat. He asked me to do that, and I tagged him on the old Twitter and and Facebook and Instagram. And I and, and you know, I, <laughs> <laughs> I, might, I mean, not to give too much away. Our first show is definitely going to be a, it's going to be like pulling the band-aid off, mm -hmm. um, where there's going to be people that are going to work in this first show that might be Battlefront Pro, or vice versa, people in Battlefront Pro show that might be extreme eventually. Okay. We're kind of going to sit down, and we're going to do these two shows, kind of go what works best for what group. And, um, and literally, it's not, there's not like, both groups are going to be, they're going to be the same but different. Mm -hmm. sure. um, it's going to be just like Raw and SmackDown or whatever. Yeah, very but it's going to be, um, but like what works best for which product. And in the venture, like there's going to be like, we're kind of baby stepping away through it. And I think that the, like the, there's going to be some storylines and some stuff that's going to happen on the 26th. That's going to force you to have to buy a ticket for the 9th. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. There's going to be a, there's, there's going to be a, Couple what? Things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so your your creative juices have intertwined because it is a subdivision, if you will, of Battlefront Pro. Informed or be cast out. Yeah, and, and and it's like you're taking it. So the uh, the Battlefront Pro wrestling fans will be interested in checking out the new sub subdivision. I, I hate to use that word. It's the only thing that kind of comes to mind. It's a great rush song. <laughs> it is. Um, now being in the home base, and once you. Uh, 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 first off, is the roster, is, is it getting much bigger? Is it staying similar? Is it an overflow of the roster? How is this working? It's going to be both Battlefront Pro and both Battlefront Pro Extreme are going to be kind of a combination of Battlefront Pro workers mm -hmm. and some people that we're bringing in from the outside. Yeah, mm -hmm. a lot of it is, yeah, a lot of it's going to be very organic and generic. We really, that's the whole thing, with, I think, what Scotty's trying to say, too, is uh, we really don't, I, we don't really know uh, not that we don't know, but we're, we're right. really trying to. Uh, it's still piecing throw, together. We, we, we want to see what what happens because uh, we did. Scotty has a very much a very much a plan for and a vision. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we all do have a vision for what this is going to be. So really, uh, this is, this goes show to show sometimes, mm -hmm. and especially for something this this you know serious and this important in, in this industry for for Battlefront Pro Extreme. Uh, we're just really kind of. Throwing out what what's going to happen because anything we don't know what's going to. I mean, like sometimes, man, you make a star in an instant. Right. Yeah. Sometimes there's a spot. There's a, some something happens, and and that's that guy's that ex, that guy that is going to be in our brand. Mm. You know, there we don't necessarily have a like a, a draft pick or somebody that's no. you know we're going to say is. <laughs> I got, I got, I got a, a couple, but the, you know what I'm saying. The draft is coming. Yeah. We, we really just want the guys that go out there and do what what I think the the mission statement for Extreme Battlefront Extreme is just the passion, mm -hmm. the hard work. And what are you going to do? Get yourself over, kid. Mm. And just go out there and prove it. And to me, those guys and gals that go out there and do that kind of, you know, what we're looking for will be 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's like a building process to where we're going to be looking out for those guys right. and gals, yeah. whatever. You know what I'm saying? That's I think, and for me at least, I'm looking for people that are willing to take that shot. You know, ba- Battlefront does a bi-monthly thing. Are yes. you going to be doing the same? And will it enter like like a jigsaw puzzle? Will it? How, how is this schedule going to work? It's going to be, I mean, roughly, but it's going to be you're going to have a Battlefront show one month. Next week, next month they're gonna, or a month or, or two months from there, Battlefront Pro Extreme. Month after that, Battlefront, um, Battlefront Pro Extreme is going to be traveling. Uh, yes. We're, we're, yes. We have, yes. we are going to be bringing. We have two spots we're looking at in Connecticut right now. We have places in New Jersey we're going to be doing talking. Uh, okay. Vermont, it's oh, going to yeah, be a traveling definitely. show. It's going to be a traveling yeah. circus. Wow. Um, and yeah, it's going to be. Um, it's going to. Be, there's, there's always going to be something to be planning or something coming up. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But it's also not going to be oversaturated. Right. Absolutely, absolutely. Can, can I ask you of a gigantic favor? And I know that Battlefront doesn't do this now, but just keep that trend. Um, when you get wrestlers' pictures, don't use those 20-year-old pictures if you've got, like, an older cat coming in and he looks all beautiful, like, 20 years ago, and then that's um, not Have you him. seen the pictures that we use for our promo shots? I, I kind of do. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I don't have a current picture from the last... I yeah, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got to get going. I got yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, hey, like I now. said, I, I, I just run at the oh, cuff, geez. so it, that's fine. No, 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 there, there's totally more information good. down the road to be had. I can't express the amount of time we spent because I think it's been a couple hours, to be honest. Yeah, with we you. did good. No, we did good. Um, I really can't express the, oh, no, brother. the value pleasure, of your time, man. I, I, I really appreciate it. Hey, 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 don't go nowhere, man. Don't, don't, don't run out. Okay. Pee my, I'm going to pee myself. Oh, my God. All right. Well, before he pisses himself, Jeez. this <laughs> was turning the pot. All right. I'll, with Don I'll, Kincaid. We're, we're going we're gonna to finish the. Uh, yeah, yeah. I got I to gotta close it off. Yeah. Sure. Hold, uh, on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. With my very special guests. Just Incredible and Scotty Anarchy uh, from Battlefront Pro Extreme and Battlefront Pro Wrestling, both intertwined. Uh, there's going to be what a future you two are going to bring us. Um, I can't thank you again for your time. Uh, I'm freezing my ass off, so I wanted to go like an hour ago, <laughs> but I had so much to figure out what this the hell was dedication. going on. Yeah. Yes. Um, so I hope there's a sequel coming down the road. Yes, and, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Dude, I really I appreciate your time. This has been amazing. Oh, Thank you so much. We had a great time, man. Yeah, great time. Awesome. Thank you so much, brother. Yeah. All right. I totally got left hanging. Oh, oh, my, God, dude. oh my God. Oh, dude. That's totally getting edited. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 wait. Wait, Scotty Anarchy specifically. I cannot close this interview out. There is no way. I need you to say one thing. Yes. A little bit of the bubbly. A little bit of the bubbly. Please, please. A little bit of the bubbly. <laughs> I got it, baby. I got it.